Okay, hello everyone. Good morning, afternoon, and evening. Uh, wherever you are, this is Toby Huang, Marketing Manager at MGI. Welcome to another installment of MGI's webinar series. Our topic today will be on MGI's PGS and PGD total solutions. So we will start the webinar in just a few minutes, but before that, just a few quick notes. The webinar is best viewed on a Wi-Fi connection. Uh, so if you have any issues with the audio or video, please try refreshing the web page. And during the webinar, if you guys have any questions, you can click the white Q&A button at the bottom of the page, and you'll be taken to a web form where you can submit your questions. At the end of the webinar, we will go over and answer all your questions. So our next upcoming webinar will be in two weeks on Thursday, October 10th, where we will cover quality control and best practices for DMB-Seq G400RS, previously known as the MGI-Seq 2000RS. And so now I'd like to introduce our speaker for today, Ms. Erin Zhang, who is our product manager for the MGI-Seq 200 sequencers, as well as the associated total solutions. And uh, without much further ado, uh, here is Erin. Hello. Hi, everyone. My name is Erin. Uh, I'll be the presenter for today's webinar. Uh, welcome, everyone, to join us. Uh, so today, for today's seminar, we are going to talk about pre-implantation genetic screening solutions provided by MGI Tech. So uh, for these solutions, we are aim to uh, provide end-to-end -end solutions to our users so that everyone can do the embryonic abnormality detection from sample all the way to report. So in today's session, we'll be uh, talk about uh, three different topics. The first one is PGIS total solutions provided by us and then followed by PGT for monogenic disease. And lastly, uh, nowadays we see a trend for PGT M as well as PGS detection in one run, so we can also provide such solutions to our users. So first, let's take a look at PGS total solutions. This is a little bit background on what is PGS or what is PGTA. So PGT stands for uh, pre-implantation genetic testing. And for this testing, there's uh, two different uh, tests. The first one is called pre-implantation genetic screening. And nowadays, it is also known as pre-implantation genetic testing for aneuploidy. So for this test, it's basically to detect the copy number variations on a chromosome level. On the other hand, the other test is called PGD. It stands for pre-implantation genetic uh, diagnosis. And it includes two different tests, which is PGTM, M stands for monogenic disease, and PGTSR, SR stands for structural rearrangement. So if I conclude them into a graph, so basically PGTA and PGTSR is to detect the variations on a chromosome level, whereas for PGTM, it detects the mutations on a gene level. So why do we need to do PGS, or who can be benefit from PGS testings? So usually uh, for the P uh, IVF centers, uh, we recommend the couples who has uh, uh, repeated implantation failure or miscarriage, or usually the mother has uh, uh, advanced uh, maternal age, usually it's above uh, 35, and also the couples have a history of uh, chromosomal abnormalities, as well as if the father has severe male factors. So we re recommend these four groups of couples for PGS testing before the implantation. So there's a report uh, here shows that um, by employing PGS testing, it can increase the 
implantation success rate as well as decrease the miscarriage rate. On the right hand side, uh, the graph shows uh, an internal report from EGI Genomics uh, published in uh, 2014. So in the report, uh, more than 2,000 samples are collected from 20 different IVF centers. And we can see from this graph, more than 57% uh, of the embryos are tested by PGS with chromosome abnormalities. So we can see this is not a small number. Not only in China, but we also see uh, PGTA or PGS activities uh, significant, significantly rise uh, during the past few years in European countries as well. So in this graph, we can see comparing to uh, 2013, the number of uh, PGS activities increased by more than 6,000 treatment cycles uh, in 2014 comparing to the last year. So for PGS testing, there's a few technologies uh, has been employed over the years. So firstly, uh, in about uh, 1995, the FISH technologies uh, has been developed for PGS testing. FISH stands for fluorescence in situ hybridization. Uh, for this technology, usually five uh, chromosomes are detected at the same time. Chromosome 21, 18, 13, and sex chromosomes for annual Fridays. However, due to the limitation, uh, this technology does not provide, uh, does not detect the copy number variations. And according to a report published in 2007, there is no increasing implantation success rate or reducing miscarriage rates reported with FISH technology. After a few years, there's another technology called microarray or uh, ACGH. Uh, this technology can uh, simultaneously detect all 24 chromosome aneuploidies, as well as for copy number variation. However, the resolution for copy number variation is not as high so it can only detect the uh, copy number variation above 10 megabase. And for microarray, uh, we can see a dramatic increasing implantation success rate as well as reducing miscarriage rate. Um, so nowadays, we see a lot of IVF centers start to shift from microarray into high throughput sequencing. For high throughput sequencing, not only we can detect the 24 chromosome aneuploidy, but we can also detect uh, copy number variation with a higher resolution. So the resolution can achieve by our technology is uh, any copy number variation above four megabase. And because um, this technology is also coupled with automation, so the overall workflow is easier for the user. And for high throughput sequencing, you can actually put more samples, so the cost of each sample is largely reduced. And uh, as show, the data show in this report that we also see an increasing implantation success rate and reduced miscarriage rate. So here are a few news as well as publications uh, on the PGS based on sequencing method. So BGI is the first uh, organization in the world to use um, sequencing based PGS to uh, detect um, the copy number variation for IVF baby. So this methodology as well as the clinical outcomes is also reported and published on the magazines. So how does PGS testing fit into the overall assist uh, reproductive technology. So here is the overview from the start all the way to implantation. So for the IVF process, first we combine the 
the egg as well as the, uh, the sperm um, in the petri dish and cultured uh, in vitro for a few days. So usually during day three or day five, an, uh, a sample biopsy is being done to uh, get some, a few cells for testing and the rest of the embryos are preserved in cryotubes for further use. So uh, as below, we can see for the samples to be tested, first we'll do a whole genome amplification because usually um, the number of cells uh, extracted here is uh, very little. So we have to amplify the gene first and then put it into the uh, automated library preparation system for library construction. And then after that, just move to sequencing and uh, for automated analysis. And once the embryo's uh, health status is determined, the healthy embryo will be selected for implantation. And uh, in this report published in 2012, we can see there's uh, about 27% higher rate of pregnancy uh, with PGS assisted. So this is the uh, PGS total solution provided by MGI Tech. So we can see for this package, it includes all the way from sample collection, uh, all the way to uh, bioinformatic analysis and report. So we can see uh, step from step. The first uh, step is to collect the samples and input the sample information to the system. And then uh, automated library preparation system is provided in the package. So for the user, minimum hands-on time is uh, guaranteed. And then move to sequencing. And uh, after sequencing, the FASTQ data is uh, automatically uploaded to server and uh, for analysis. And report will be generated at the end of the test. And all these uh, different components are managed by our Zebra Laboratory Information man Management System. And the throughput for this system uh, is 16 as well as 24. And uh, for 16 samples, uh, the turnaround time is within one day. So for this package, not only the machine and the software are included, but also the library preparation as well as the sequencing reagents are also packaged inside. So for the library preparation uh, kits, um, what we are using here is called MGI Care Single Cell Chromosome Copy Number Variation Test Set. In this set, uh, 48 reactions are included and um, uh, we include whole genome amplification, library preparation, DNA circularization, everything inside. So you don't have to purchase additional reagents from other parties. And this uh, kit is very sensitive. It can fit uh, down to a single cell uh, content, which is 6.6 uh, .6 picogram of DNA. And uh, um, many samples has been tested with these kits and reproduced data has been shown, which we'll talk about later in the slides. Here is an overview for our automated sample prep workflow. So the input sample is embryo cells and uh, the output is uh, our DNB. If you have listened to our previous webinars, you, have, uh, you, you will roughly have an idea what is DNB. DNB stands for DNA nanobots. So this is a special technology developed by uh, MGI Tech. So we'll introduce a little bit more background later. In this pro uh, progress, we can see all the green boxes are automated steps. Only the whole genome amplification as well as the quantification has to be done manually. But it can be done within 15 minutes. 
So comparing to a manual operation workflow, which costs roughly one day, eight hours, the automated uh, sample prep workflow only costs less than six hours. So it will reduce the overall turnaround time. And the machine we are using here is called MGI-SP100. Each time the throughput is 16 samples, and this machine is certified with CFDA, or it is also known as NMPA, CEIVD, CB, and C2. So comparing to the menu steps, uh, MGI SP100 is very easy to use. As you can see on the left hand side, it provides a guided uh, tool on the software. So for the users, you just simply click on the next button then set up everything inside the machine, just click run. As mentioned before, it largely reduced the turnaround time from eight hours to less than six hours. So you can finish this uh, library preparation within one day, less than one day. And because the whole process is automated, so the reproducibility is much higher, uh, much better than the manual steps. And MGI SP100 is an automated library preparation system optimized for NGI's workflow comparing to other liquid handlers. So you don't have to validate it yourself. All the workflows is already validated and uh, used by uh, many users. After the library preparation, we'll uh, go into the sequencing step. So for here, this uh, PGS solutions, we recommend our smaller throughput uh, sequencer, which is called MGI SIG 200. The maximum throughput for this machine is 60 gigabase. And uh, it also comes with the compatible flow cells as well as sequencing reagents. So the throughput in this PGS solutions is 16 samples and 24 samples. So depending on the user's need, you can run as many as 24 or as less as 16 or even 8 samples. This machine is also certified with CM, uh, CFDA or NMPA, CE, IVD, CB, and C2. So here I'll spend a little bit more time to talk about the core technology of DNB-seq for MGI sequencer, genetic sequencer platforms. So what makes us different is we use this DNA, DNA nanobots for sequencing. Comparing to other technologies, DNA nanobots use a linear amplification method so every time it only copies the original inserts. So even if there's a PCR error, it doesn't pass down to the next generation. So it will enable a less error rate during the whole sequencing process. And as published in the publication, this method almost have no index hopping. And on the flow cell, all these nanobots are um, aligned in a pattern, so it has a higher chip utilization. And the last step is to do the uh, CPAS, stands for combination, uh, combinatorial probe anchor analysis. And because we use this probe to uh, anchor onto the template, it enables the base error rate as low as 0 0.001. So it largely increases the data acquisition efficiency and achieve a higher throughput in a short period of time. So this is the um, software installed on the sequencers. So as you can see, it is very easy to use just for six simple steps. Click next, scan your samples, 
scan NGS kit, scan the flow cells, then just click run. After the FASTQ data is generated, all this uh, automated, uh, automatically uploaded into the server and uh, um, automated analysis has, uh, will be done. So you can view the report in two different formats. You can log in into our ZLIM system and view as a web page or you can download as a word file. So currently, the, um, the report is um, shown as Chinese or English version. And there are two resolutions provided, 16 meg or 4 meg. So according to different requirements, you can download different versions of reports. So let's take a look, closer look at the results. So what we are providing in the report are the final results as well as a few graphs. The resolution of this solution is down to 4 meg. And here you can see the numbers show 46xx. So it indicates the 46 chromosomes and the gender of the baby, uh, of the embryo. And we understand that in some regions, this information, the gender information is allowed, so we'll report. For some regions, this is not allowed, so we'll um, remove this information in some of the regions. And follow the gender information is the deletion or the duplication size, as well as the position. And the graph below is the copy ratio of the chromosomes. So it is uh, listed as green as well as red colors. So each one represents one chromosome. And we can see here in the chromosome 18, there's a deletion. And we can also see there's a drop uh, in the ratio, copy ratio to the lower cutoff here. And the graph below is a digital karyotype. And we can see some are labeled as green, indicates a duplication, and some are labeled with red, indicates deletion. This set of solutions has also been validated with national standard samples. For the national standard samples, there are 17 strings of cell lines. 59 of them are fibroblast cell lines, and 10 of them are peripheral blood cell lines, and the rest six are from embryo stem cell line. And there are 52 CNV positive samples and 13 aneuploidies. The rest 10 samples are negative. So here is, um, um, we extract one of the runs, uh, including 24 samples, to show the um, basic stats for sequencing. So we can see the overall risk is about uh, 10 million reads. And for the duplication rate, GC rate, as well as ratio CV, it's quite, uh, quite consistent throughout different samples. And here is a potted graph. We can see the CVs are all very tight. So it indicates a very good sequencing results. So if we move on to the analysis results, all these samples are correctly tested, both for aneuploidy, copy number variation, as well as negative samples. And we have run these 75 national standards three times, and all are detected correctly. So apart from the standard samples, 
we also um, show some of the clinical data. So this data is from one of the art centers using our total solutions. For this center, they have tested more than 6,000 embryos over the years. And we can see more than 50% of them um, abnorm abnormalities. And what is interesting from this graph, you can see that we can see a very high rate in abnormalities in chromosome 15, 16, 21, and 22. And this is a closer look into the clinical cases. So we have selected these three families, and each family have around two or three embryos tested for the PGS, the copy number variation. And on this column is the sequencing results. You can see for the first family, the first embryo has a lot of duplications. And the second one has additional uh, one chromosome 16. And the last embryo is the healthy embryo. So it is uh, implanted and uh, follow up indicates a healthy baby is born. Same situation for the family two. The first embryo is implanted and the results is consistent with the follow-ups as well as the family three. So to conclude the PGS total solutions, we can see comparing to the uh, IVF centers without doing PGS, we can see a significant increase in pregnancy rate. And for the total solution, because every step is automated, so it can provide a fast and easy workflow to the user. And because the resolution is very high, it can be down to 4 meg. So it can also provide an accurate results to the user. So the next session is to talk about PGTM. So PGTM is designed for the couples that are known to have family history of monogenic disease, or they already have a child that has a monogenic disease born. So if they want to have a healthy baby before the IVF uh, implantation, they can test for PGTM. So in this process, we can see it's similar to PGS. First is to combine the egg and sperm, and then during day three or day five, we do uh, a sample biopsy. So for this sample biopsy, we'll do whole genome application as well, and send it for library preparation and test it for sequencing. At the same time, we also collect the blood samples from the parents or the proband and extract the DNA and put it into the library construction. And the embryo DNA as well as the parents' DNA will be sequenced at the same time and do a linkage analysis. Then we'll know which embryo is healthy and select for implantation. So this is a detailed workflow for PGTM. The kit here we are using is called MGI Care Pre-Implantation Monogenic Disease Detection Kit. And it also has 48 reactions. So from the sample, as I mentioned, will include both the family DNA samples as well as the embryo cell WGA products and put it into our MGI-SP100 for library preparation process. So for the library preparation process, we use the target region capture method. So basically here we use the probe to pull down the target region and detect it for the uh, monogenic mutations. And during analysis, 
First, the raw data will be filtered into high quality data and this data will be aligned to the reference and do a SNP calling. After this, a linkage analysis is being done and report will be generated. So here is a list of disease we include in the PGTM. So we have two different panels. The first panel is uh, using a probe A, includes uh, this few disease. So in total, we have included 50 genes for 34 diseases. So these uh, 34 diseases have covered all the common dis monogenic disease we have observed, such as uh, thalassemia or um, let's say DMD and polycystic uh, kidney disease. And this is uh, panel B. So some of the disease um, that are quite common, such as um, cystic fibrosis, spinal muscular atrophy, breast cancer, osteogenesis imperfecta, So here is the data performance from, uh, the, uh, from the results. So we can see here the samples were from a standard cell lines of a family. So this family has four members, including parents, the first child, and the second child. So for the parents, they are the beta thalassemia carriers. So they are uh, heterozygous. And the first child is also heterozygous. And the second child is um, thalassemia patient, which uh, is simulated as proband. And we have simulated three embryos, embryo one, two, three, and for embryo Two, uh, one, we did uh, three repeats. So all these 14 samples are pulled together and sent for sequencing at one go. And this is the performance data. Uh, on the first table, this is the basic stats for the sequencing. So we can see the raw reads as well as the clean reads are quite consistent between different samples. And the average capture rate of the library is about 60%, which is uh, pretty high here. And uh, for the coverage, we can see for the father, mother, as well as the proband, um, the DNA are extracted from the blood so the coverage is all above 90 percent and for the embryos the genes are from um, WGA products but uh, it's still above 88 percent so we can see the coverage is pretty good here and below the table shows the linkage studies Here we can see we divide them into uh, three regions and we use these uh, three regions um, to detect uh, which haplotype it is. And for all these embryos, we can see it inherited the second haplotype from the father and the first haplotype from the mother, which indicates all of them are carriers. And these results has been shown to consistent with standard results. So let's move on to the last session of today's seminar. So in this session, we'll talk about how we combine PGTM as well as PGS in one workflow. So this uh, workflow, I would say it is similar to um, the PGT plus the um, PGTM plus the PGS. What is different from the previous uh, workflow is instead of 
probe capture, we use multiplex PCR to target the monogenic disease regions. So this is the method we call TAG-SIG. TAG-6 stands for targeted and genome-wide simultaneous sequencing. So here, let's take a look at, uh, for the embryo samples, we'll still do a WGA amplification and then do the library prep as per normal. And for the blood samples from parents as well as the proband, we'll extract the DNA and do the normal library preparation steps and combine these two samples together and send it for sequencing. At the analysis steps, we'll match the sequence with the primer sequence we designed for multiplex PCR. If the sequence match with the primer sequence, we'll know these are the targeted region then we'll do the PGTM analysis. And for those which does not match the primer sequence, we'll do the genome-wide uh, copy number variation analysis. And this is the kit we provide in this um, workflow. This is called MGI care single gene disease facing and chromosome copy number variation sequencing library prep kit. So in the library preparation process, we can see there are two PCR steps. And the first one is the multiplex PCR. We use the primer to target the targeted regions for monogenic disease. And for the analysis part, you can see it is clearly separated into two different flows. The first one, so basically we use the primer sequence to align. If aligned with the primer sequence, then we'll test for PGTM and uh, do a linkage study. If it doesn't, we'll do the CNV calling and generate the report. So this is how the report look like. The upper part, shows the PGS, the copy number variation detection. As you can see, it is very similar to the PGS reporting as we shown in the first session. The only difference here is the re uh, resolution is about uh, 16 megabase instead of 4 megabase. And below one is for the PGTM testing. In this standard kit, we detect thalassemia as well as HLA typing. And for thalassemia, we have designed different sets of SNP primers to detect which haplotype it is. And uh, it will send for linkage study. For HLA typing, the number of SNP primers is uh, about uh, hundred sets. And this is the data we have tested with the kits. On the left hand side is the, the family we use for this testing. We can see for both mother and father, they are thalassemia carriers. And for the first daughter they have, it is uh, thalassemia patients. And then for these parents, they have six embryos. And this is a basic stats for the uh, sequencing results. And we can see for the last column, the target region coverage are all 100% above 100x. And this is the copy number variation graphs. We can see for embryo number four, there's a little deletion here and the size of about uh, 33 megabase. And we can also show, or we can also see it from the graph. This slide is to show the linkage study results. We can see that on the first row, 
out of the 60 sets of primers, seven sets are effective to differentiate the father's haplotype, and 12 are effective to detect the mother's haplotype. So we use these seven sets as well as 12 sets to do the linkage study and identify these, all these embryos uh, carriers inherited one haplotype from father and one from mother. And these results are consistent with carrier mapping results. On the right hand side, we have pulled out the sequencing data. So we can see from this raw data on the uh, gene sequence, it validated our results. So at last, I would like to summarize uh, this webinar. So we have introduced the PGS total solutions, PGTM for monogenic disease solutions, as well as a solution we designed to combine PGS as well as PGTM. Currently, our PGS as well as PGTM total solutions only offers thalassemia and HLA typing, but subsequently we are developing more disease to be included. So stay tuned for our next product updates. Thank you for your time. <laughs>